guys, it's Kira and welcome to another reading vlog. I really hope you're in the mood for an adventure today because I'm about to embark on a massive reading quest in the form of a Lord of the Rings themed 24 hour readathon and I'm of course bringing all of you along for the journey. This is my first ever time reading the Lord of the Rings and you know I love a 24 hour readathon so I couldn't resist trying to fit as many of them as possible in a 24 hour readathon and essentially just challenging myself to see how many of them I can actually read in one day. But the reason I'm embarking on this quest now is because today is Friday the 3rd of July and between the 1st of July and the 14th of August my wonderful friend Lucy from the channel Crescent Pages and I are co-hosting a Lord of the Rings read-along called The Fellowship of the Read-Along. Like I said, that read-along is taking place over just over like a month and a half, so we've got plenty of time to read all of these books, and we're also talking about them all over social media throughout this month and a bit, and also hosting live shows, so it's all very, very exciting. But being me and being a massive fan of 24-hour readathons, I also couldn't resist kickstarting my read of the series with a 24-hour readathon. So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today. Today is Friday the 3rd of July, and like I said, the read-along officially started on the 1st, but I've waited until today because I wanted to do a 24-hour readathon. So I'm going to be starting the books completely from scratch, and I'm really, really excited and just a smidge nervous as well. But I will, of course, be starting with... The first book in the series, The Fellowship of the Ring, and I'm really looking forward to getting into it and finally sort of delving into this series and seeing what it's all about. Now, this book is only about, only, 407 pages, I believe. So it's a relatively average sized book. However, the text is pretty tiny. So I honestly have no idea how far I'm gonna get through the series in this next 24 hours. But if I manage to read one of the books completely, I'll be very, very happy. And I'm also so excited to bombard Lucy with all of my thoughts. She is reading the series for about the millionth time and is a massive expert on this series and just such a fan of Lord of the Rings. So I'm really excited to be on this little journey with her and of course bringing all of you guys along with me. So it's currently just after 7 p.m. on the 3rd of July and I'm officially starting my read of this series at 8 p.m. which means I've got plenty of time to get cozy, settle down, get my reading essentials aka a cup of tea and get ready to delve into this book and get started on my journey to Middle Earth. So I'll catch up with you later and of course keep you updated with all of my thoughts as we kickstart this little reading quest. So it's a little bit after half past nine, which means I'm about an hour and a half into the read along and I'm currently 65 pages into The Fellowship of the Ring. And so far, I'm really, really enjoying this book. I have to say, when I read the prologue, which is about 20 pages at the very beginning of the book, I was a little bit daunted about exactly what I was getting myself into because the prologue essentially sort of serves to give you a little bit of background information and context about the Hobbits and the history of the Hobbits, everything that they've kind of like gone through how they've developed, where they've moved and migrated to and all of that stuff and it just felt like a lot of information and I felt like I was reading so slowly at that point because it was just a lot to digest. There were certain bits in the prologue that were really enjoyable and I'll talk about them in a little bit but at first I was just a little bit scared about what I was getting into. However, once you then get into chapter one which is the like present day narrative where we're following Frodo, it starts to pick up pace and it's nowhere near as information dense as the prologue. So that prologue did give me a little bit of a fright because I was like, if the whole book is like this, I just don't know how I'm gonna get along with it. But it's absolutely not. That prologue does just kind of serve to give you a little bit of context and extra information. And then once you get into the actual story, it starts to read more like a novel and you start to sort of pick up pace a little bit and it just feels more like a story. So I'm really enjoying it 
and especially now that I've gotten into the actual story it's definitely a much more enjoyable read and I thought I'd share with you a few quotes that I've really enjoyed so far. One is actually from the prologue, it's on the second page of the entire book and it's speaking about the hobbits as people and explaining their characters and it says and laugh they did and eat and drink and often and heartily, being fond of simple jests at all times and of six meals a day when they could get them. They were hospitable and delighted in parties and in presents, which they gave away freely and eagerly accepted. And I just feel like hobbits sound like such nice types of people. And in particular, I really related to wanting to eat at least six times a day and eat and drink and be happy and laugh because that just seems like such a lovely way to live. So I really liked that and that was one of my favourite bits that jumped out from the very, very beginning of the book. And then on the very first first bit as we jump into the actual story, so in chapter one which is titled A Long Expected Party, we're told that Mr Bilbo Baggins of Bag End announced that he would shortly be celebrating his 111st birthday and that is his 111th birthday but I just love that it was called 111st because I just feel like that's really cute and adds a little bit of like quirk and character to the hobbits which I just think is really nice. It's only like a small detail but I just think it really adds to them and then we find out that like they have a slightly different style of like coming of age and so the age between your 20s and your 33rd birthday I think is your tweens and 33 is when you come of age so there's all kinds of little interesting snippets of information that get dropped in which just add to the picture of what the hobbits are like and how they are sort of like characterized and how they live their lives and I feel like that was really cute and just helped you to build up that picture and then the last thing I noticed was after Bilbo has gone away and left everything to Frodo and Frodo is kind of trying to process everything with Gandalf and is a little bit annoyed about what's going on. He just says, I wish it need not have happened in my time. And then Gandalf says, so do I and so do all who live to see such times, but that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. And I just felt like that was a very inspiring piece of information, which I feel like you could apply to real life as well as to books like The Fellowship of the Ring, because something that I've definitely explored in my yoga teacher training recently is just that it's really important to not worry about what you wish had happened or what you wish could happen, and instead just focus on dealing with and accepting what is actually happening in the present moment. So I always love now because I feel like since doing yoga teacher training and exploring yoga philosophy, I've just seen these kind of messages come up in most of the books that I'm reading, which is always really fun. So I'm currently, like I said, 65 pages into this book, definitely enjoying it. The prologue gave me a little bit of a scare, but I'm now getting into the story properly. It's picking up pace and I'm really excited to see where it goes. I've also really enjoyed hearing about Gollum and his backstory and how he came to be, which is kind of creepy but very very interesting and I'm really looking forward to carrying on. I don't know how late I'm going to stay up tonight because I've just made myself a second cup of tea which I'm hoping will help to keep me awake but it's starting to get dark outside and I am a massive old lady and can't really stay up very late so it might be the case that I end up going to sleep relatively soon maybe at like 11 o'clock ish and then wake up super early to get started and make the most of my reading day tomorrow but I will of course keep you updated and let you know my thoughts as I carry on reading. Same Frodo, same.
Okay, so it's now just after half past seven in the morning. So I've been awake for about an hour and a half and trying to read in bed. And I've already had two power naps, <laughs> which is just ridiculous. So I think the best thing to do is force myself to get out of bed, make a cup of tea and go and read somewhere else because clearly I cannot be trusted to read in bed without trying to go back to sleep. So. That is exactly what I'm going to do, but I thought I would share one quote from yesterday evening that I really liked, which was, just as Frodo is about to set off on his journey, and he thinks that the only person going with him is Sam, and he doesn't want to tell Pippin and Merry about where he's going, because he thinks he has to keep it a secret, and then they basically say to them, you've not been nearly as clever or clever enough for that you've obviously been planning to go and saying farewell to all of your haunts this year since april we've constantly heard you muttering shall i ever look down into that valley again i wonder and things like that and pretending you've come to the end of your money and then frodo says good heavens i thought i'd been both careful and clever and i just thought that was so funny because he thought he was being super sly and like hiding what he was planning to do and they all saw right through him so i just love the little friendship that we've got going on between all of the hobbits but i'm now on page 166 so i went to sleep last night on page about 140 and I've woken up and I've only managed to read like 25 pages because of my stupid power naps. So I'm going to go make a cup of tea, go read somewhere else and hopefully not fall asleep again. All that is gold does not glitter, not all those who wander are lost. The old that is strong does not wither, deep roots are not reached by the frost. From the ashes a fire shall be woken, a light from the shadow shall spring. Renewed shall be blade that was broken, the crownless again shall be king. How beautiful is that? I feel like I could just read that all day. I've heard the all that is gold does not glitter and not all those who wander are lost quite a few times before, but I had no idea that it was from this book, which is cool, but that is just such a beautiful passage. Okay, so it might have taken me a while because it is nearly 1pm in the afternoon, but I have now finally finished up reading The Fellowship of the Ring. This was my main goal for this 24 hour readathon was to finish this one, so I'm super happy that I have, and I now have seven hours left of the readathon, which is great because I can make a start on The Two Towers, which I'm really excited about. But delving into my thoughts on this one, this book was so good. I honestly did not know what to expect from The Lord of the Rings because it's just something that I'd never read like anything like this before. It was very different to my usual style of reading. I'd say the most similar in terms of reading something that's high fantasy that I've ever come to would have been reading the Game of Thrones series, which I did really like, but even so, this is still so different in style to Game of Thrones and I didn't know if I was gonna enjoy it, but I absolutely loved it. It obviously took me quite a long time to read. I started it at 8 p.m. last night and despite having slept for about six or seven hours, it's still taken me all the way up until 1 p.m. So it definitely took me a while to get through. It was 407 pages long, but on each of those pages, I feel like Tolkien just puts in so much detail. We have so much historical context, geographical context, we're constantly being exposed to new places, new species and all kinds of things. And every time something new is introduced, he gives you so much detail 
detail about the surroundings, about the people, about the history. And it's also incredible because it really paints such a vivid picture, but it also means that it's a type of a te like text that you can't really read very quickly because if you do, you'll be sure to miss out on plenty of detail. And I also think it's definitely the type of book that you could come back to time and time again and still spot new details because it is just so rich and vivid in its imagery and descriptions and context. And honestly, like, Tolkien's mind must have just been a wild place to have fathomed all of this and created such a world because you can just tell that there's probably like a million times more history in his head than was even put on these pages and yet you still feel like you're being exposed to so much information. So it was absolutely incredible and honestly going into this book I was a little bit nervous. I was excited but I was slightly scared because it's so different to anything I normally read. I only really started reading like high fantasy last year when I picked up the Game of Thrones series for the first time and I absolutely loved that. However, that's kind of the only real high fantasy series that I've ever read that I can think of and so this was a little bit daunting to me but so far obviously only on the first book in the series I'm really really liking it because it is just so vivid and I love the imagery I also love how you have like poetry and song interwoven with the text and it just feels so lovely so I'm really glad to have finished this one and in case you couldn't tell it's definitely a five star read. I thought I'd share a few more quotes from my last little read of the book so I think I last spoke to you maybe when I was around like less than 200 pages so I've read like just over 200 since I last spoke to you and there's so much interesting stuff. I also thought it was quite interesting because the first bit of the book definitely felt a little bit slower paced and it felt a little bit more intimate between a small group of friends kind of traveling on a quest or a little bit more of an adventure I guess it felt like whereas when you move into book two from about page 230 it then starts to really pick up pace and you're getting exposed to a lot more people moving through a lot more places and it just has a lot more to take in neither was like better than the other but it was interesting to see that transition and so one thing that I did really like throughout, and my favourite character I have to say, was Sam. I just think he's such a lovely little character and such a perfect little hobbit and he's just got such like a sense of loyalty and friendship, particularly towards Frodo, and he just can't bear the thought of being separated from him. And so there's this one quote where he wants to continue being Frodo's companion and he says, you won't send him off alone, surely, Master, unable to contain himself any longer and jumping up from the corner where he'd been quietly sitting on the floor. No, indeed, said Elrond, turning towards him with a smile. You shall at least go with him. It's hardly possible to separate you from him, even when he's summoned to a secret council and you are not. And then Sam sits down, blushing and muttering. A nice pickle we've landed ourselves in, Mr Frodo. And I just think he's so cute and their friendship is something that I really like and just feels so pure. So that was a very cute bit. And then there was another piece of poetry which I really liked from this, which says, I sit beside the fire and think of how the world will be when winter comes without a spring that I shall ever see. For still there are so many things that I have never seen. In every wood, in every spring, there is a different green. And I just love that imagery of how these people are all on this same quest together. And yet they're all going through such different experiences because they're all individuals and of course, that's the same for anyone. You can never sort of experience everything. And so I really liked that. And I feel like there was another bit where I quite liked the theme of fate, which let me see if I can find. Okay, so they've just been looking into like a mirror which can potentially like tell you some bits of future or sort of expose things to you. And then Galadriel, I think it might be pronounced, says, Do not trouble your hearts over much with thought of the road tonight. Maybe the paths that you each shall tread are already laid before your feet, though you do not see them. And I really like that theme of fate, which I think sort of runs throughout this whole book, particularly, of course, with reference to Frodo and his quest and the path that he has to take, not because he's chosen it, but because it was kind of chosen for him. And again, returning to his friendship with Sam, I feel like Sam's fate is to follow Frodo no matter what. So absolutely loved this one. And I also decided to do a little bit of readathon maths because why not? So 
Obviously this book is 407 pages long and I definitely was feeling like it was taking me too long to read and of course there's no such thing, you read at whatever pace you read, but I often find myself comparing one 24 hour readathon to the other one and so because the text on this pages is so small I decided to do a little bit of math and figure out what the average is and so done a little bit of calculating and on these pages there are an average of 533 words which adds up 407 pages to just over 216,000 words and so I'm feeling like I've taken too long to read this book but in actual fact I've then compared it to the Hunger Games series which is a series that I read in a 24-hour readathon and not too long ago and on those pages you have an average of 243 words and so in two of those books you only have 211,000 words so even though I feel like it's taken me way too long to read it's actually taken me like you know like just over half a day or whatever to read the equivalent of what would have been seen as two books in a different 24-hour readathon. So my point of this is more just like don't compare yourself to other people's reading pace, just go with what you're going with because every book is different depending on what the context is, how much is on the page, whether it's tall pages, short pages, how big the margins are, how big the text is and also just how quickly you want to read it because in this book I wanted to take my time and soak in all the details and that is exactly what I did and I had a great time doing so. So it's it's 1pm and I am in desperate need of some food so I'm going to go and make some brunch, sit down, chill out for a little bit. I'm not going to eat read while, read while I eat because I'm too messy and I'll end up getting like food on the pages. And then I'm going to start The Two Towers which I believe is actually a bit of a shorter one. Um, oh. Yeah. So this one I think is only about 300 pages long so let's get into that after lunch and I will of course keep you updated. Well that was a hobbit worthy feast if I ever did see one. I am stuffed now but that was so yummy. That was basically porridge but I made it with some salted caramel vegan protein powder which is from the brand Vivo Life. Their protein powder is so yummy especially salted caramel and also it's got like added things like turmeric in which is why the oats were kind of like yellowy because that's meant to be really good for like anti-inflammation and those kinds of things and then it's also got BCAAs and other great stuff in. So I had protein powder, I also had in a little bit of vanilla yogurt and then I topped it off with strawberries, blueberries, cashew butter, peanut butter, cinnamon and some maple syrup and it was so good. That was like breakfast and lunch combined which is why that was quite like a lot of food in one bowl but it was so yummy. And my plan now is that I'm going to start reading The Two Towers but not here. I've decided inspired by the quest that Frodo and his little posse are on, I'm going to go outside and do some reading. So I'm going to go make myself a cup of chai, take that in my keep cup out to the park and go and sit and read. It's not the sunniest day but it's not raining and so I'm going to go sit outside and enjoy the book. day long it's been forecast to rain and all day long it's just been really cloudy so I figured yeah let's go out for a walk it'll be fine do some reading in the park and then literally the second that I got in the car it started raining so <laughs> that plan has gone a little bit awry but I made my chai tea as you saw I made it with like a pucker vanilla chai tea bag and then I made myself vanilla cinnamon and maple 
oat milk to make it a chai tea latte and it is so tasty so I'm still gonna have a little wander down to the lake and see if it's raining I've got the book in my bag so if it's not raining I can get the book out and if not I might come back to the car and do some car reading so I can pretend that I'm still kind of outside so let's go brave it and see what the weather is like decided to go out and do some reading at the park because it was lovely to get some fresh air that chai tea was so good and as luck would have it the rain did actually stop as soon as I sat down on the bench and didn't start again which was obviously great because it meant that I could read and not ruin this book but it was really nice and I just enjoyed sitting out there and enjoying some nature although I wouldn't say I was enjoying some peace and quiet because it was surprisingly busy and a little bit difficult to focus but I did manage to read about 60 pages of this book and then I've since come home gotten back into my pajamas some fluffy socks and slippers ready to spend the last three-ish hours of the readathon just at home getting cozy and reading as much as I can it's about 5 p.m now so I do have about three hours left but I'm really enjoying this one so far it's slightly confusing, not in the sense of the book being confusing, but I believe The Lord of the Rings was initially written as just one huge epic long novel. And so in this like trilogy that I've got, this first one started on page one and went through to page 407. And then this book starts on page 408. And so I was like, wait, how much have I actually read? Because I just was not feeling very mathsy but I think I've read about 60 pages so far and I'm on page 462 so probably like just under 60 pages and I'm really enjoying it but because it is just basically one big novel that's been split into three chunks it just feels like I'm reading like the next bit of the last book it doesn't feel like an entirely different story because obviously with some trilogies they're very clearly written to have like a beginning middle and an end in each one whereas with this one it just feels more of a continuation of the entire saga which I like because I was really enjoying that first one but at this point I feel like things are picking up pace it feels a little bit more dramatic and you are kind of worried for a lot more of the characters because things are going in a lot more like different directions and people are splitting off losing track of one another and so you don't really know what's going on but it's definitely a very very interesting book and I'm enjoying it so far and one thing that I did start thinking about whilst I was sat at the park reading was that I obviously mentioned that my favourite character so far is Sam I think he's great and I just wondered if maybe potentially Samuel Tarly from Game of Thrones was like slightly modelled off of Sam from The Lord of the Rings because I do just feel like they're very similar characters Predominantly in the fact that A, they're both called Sam, and then B, in the sense that they're both characters who you might view as maybe being like a little bit pathetic, you wouldn't view them as very brave or courageous or like strong, but then in their action you actually see that they have to challenge their inner nervousness in order to sort of protect their friends and actually although they don't look outwardly very brave or strong they actually come to be some of the most courageous and brave characters out there in their loyalty to their friends and therefore willingness to protect them and in particular we of course see that Sam in The Lord of the Rings has such a connection to and attachment to Frodo and in Game of Thrones I feel like we have a very similar thing between Sam and Jon Snow because I feel like Sam would absolutely do anything for Jon and would go to like the ends of the earth with him and I feel we get that same impression from Sam and Frodo in this book and obviously this book came way before so I just wondered being that they're both high fantasy and Lord of the Rings is kind of like a basis for a lot of what the fantasy genre has become I do wonder if George R. R. Martin maybe took some inspiration there and if so he did a great job because both Sams are brilliant so those are my thoughts for now 
I'm gonna carry on reading, but I'm about to go and make some dinner. I'm having pizza tonight, which I'm so excited about. So I'm gonna put the pizza in the oven, read while it cooks, and then I'll take a little reading break whilst I eat, because like I've already said, I'm a messy eater and I don't wanna ruin the books. And then I'll carry on going probably then until the end of the readathon, because it'll only be a couple of hours left. <laughs> And what an adventure we have been on in this last 24 hours because it has been so fun to jump into this series and I'm so glad that I'm enjoying it. Like I said, it felt like a little bit of a leap of faith jumping into this series because it is so unlike anything that I would usually read and having never read the books or watched any of the films, I just really didn't know what I was going to be getting into and so I had no real way to judge whether or not I was going to enjoy it other than Lucy's constant praise of the series. And I am ever so grateful that Lucy is such a fan of this series and that she talks about it so often, because without her, I really wouldn't have even considered picking up these books. And over the last 24 hours, I have had such a fun time delving into this series and sort of finding out about all things to do with Middle Earth, lovely hobbits, and all kinds of other exciting Lord of the Rings adventures as well. And I'm just having such a good time. So just before eight, as you saw, I was still in the middle of reading The Two Towers. I didn't quite have chance to finish off this book today and I had a feeling that was going to be the case because like I said text is really small and there's a lot of information so I'm currently on page 559 which I think translates to about 150 pages of this book read and this one is just about 300 pages long so I'm about halfway through but in total I have read of Lord of the Rings entirely 559 pages so far today and I'm not planning on stopping now although this is where the 24 hour readathon ends I'm definitely going to be continuing but 559 pages in 24 hours which by my average words per page calculations and the number of pages I've read translates to about 298 thousand words that I read in the last 24 hours which when you say it like that sounds like quite a lot. I'm really really enjoying it. I do think it's interesting that I haven't actually picked out as many quotes from the two towers so far. I'm obviously only halfway through but I found that in The Fellowship of the Ring there was a lot more lyrical and sort of like vivid and I just guess like beautiful imagery used and I think that really comes down to the fact that this is a very introductory book in the sense that it's exposing you to so many entirely new things. You're being exposed to so many different species, geographical locations, adventures, quests and all kinds of things and with that you get so much descriptive and vivid imagery which I think really lends itself to me noticing a lot of quotes and so I tabbed a lot of pages in this one whereas once we get into this one those introductions are for the most part kind of underway and you feel like you understand a little bit more about the world and what is going on and the purpose of everyone's quests and so I'd say when you get into this book it is a lot more action focused right from the start and so although that's really interesting to read about I just didn't find myself tabbing as many quotes and noticing quite as many like beautiful passages although I'm sure they definitely do exist they just didn't jump out at me quite as much but one that I did notice on page 441 so like about page 40 
30, something like that, was essentially one which I found summarised the attitudes of a lot of the characters in this book and one of the things that I just think is so great about it and that is when a couple of characters are kind of doubting their prior decision to actually go out on this quest and now they're kind of regretting it because they're coming up against hard times and then Aragon says there are some things it is better to begin than to refuse even though the end may be dark and I just feel like I've already talked about how I feel fate is a big part of this series and then I also feel like sort of a willingness to go into something just because you feel that's the right path to take regardless of what the consequences may be and knowing that you have no way of potentially knowing what could be your conclusion is just like a bravery and openness and willingness to pursue the journey which I think summarises these books and the characters and I just really really enjoyed that. And then on that point, we also have Aragorn saying, no one knows what the new day shall bring him. And that's exactly true. How can you ever know what's gonna be ahead of you and if you sort of stop yourself from pursuing new things because you don't know what the conclusion may be or what the consequences may be, then no one would ever try anything new. And so Aragorn is obviously a very brave character who is very much of the belief that I share that you kind of have to go for things sometimes even if you don't know how it will go because not trying is worse than doing it and it ending badly sometimes. So that was my favourite quote from this one and I'm just really 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 enjoying this series. In The Two Towers as well we've also been introduced to a new character called Treebeard and I won't say much about him because I feel like that's a bit spoilery now that we're in the second book in a series but all I'll say is that he's great and I really really like him and then another thing I've noticed I feel like I have been making a couple of comparisons to this series and Game of Thrones and that's predominantly just because Game of Thrones is the only high fantasy like adult high fantasy series that I have to compare this reading experience to and what I'll say is that I don't feel like this was that similar to Game of Thrones in the sense that it's obviously the Fellowship of the Ring and we have this very joint quest and adventure experience being explored. Whereas by the time we get into the Two Towers, those like groups and the Fellowship is kind of a bit more disbanded and we see these characters going off on all kinds of different and separate journeys. And I feel like at this point, it starts to feel a little bit more similar to a Game of Thrones book in the sense that the different chapters really do focus on individual groups of characters and because of the way that the previous book ended these journeys are kind of a lot more separate and I have no doubt that they will eventually sort of come back together and sort of be more connected again but at this point it definitely feels like we're sort of following several different quests even though they all have a similar aim they've kind of been taken in different directions and so it's all very interesting and I'm really really enjoying it and of course didn't get to start Return of the King because I didn't finish the two towers but that is gonna be what I'm doing going forward. So obviously, like I've mentioned, I am reading these books for The Fellowship of the Read Along, which I'm hosting along with Lucy. Lucy's channel will be linked down below. And like I said, we're doing live shows for each of these books. So the live show for the Fellowship of the Ring is actually going to be on Friday the 17th of July and it will be at 7pm on Lucy's channel. All of this information will be in the description box down below but if you don't manage to watch this vlog before that live show it will of course stay up live on Lucy's channel so you can go and watch it afterwards even if you get, don't get to tune in actually live it will just stay up there as a recording so you can go and hear all of our thoughts on this one. Then for the Two Towers, that one is going to be on my channel and I think that one is going to be on Friday the 31st of July and that one will be here at 7pm on my channel and then the final one, Return of the King, is back over on Lucy's channel on Friday the 14th of August, again at 7pm British Standard Time. So of course if you are fans of the series or if you're reading along with us for the Fellowship of the Read Along, it'd be amazing for you to join us for those live shows and chat about it and I'm now even more excited for the live shows. I was excited about them anyway, but now that I've actually started the series and know how much I'm enjoying it, I'm even more excited to delve into the conversations with Lucy and hopefully with all of you guys as well. But that brings this 24 hour readathon to an end. I've had such a great time and can't wait to continue on with my journey through Middle Earth. 
But for now, I'm going to give myself a little bit of a break from reading and I'm going to finish off today's little Lord of the Rings themed day by watching Lucy's vlog where she reread The Fellowship of the Ring because I've been holding off watching that one until I'd read this book just so that I could understand and appreciate it more. So I'm going to make a cup of tea, sit down and watch that, but that will bring this reading vlog to an end. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.